I am so sick of hearing this lecture about absolutely everything. And no, you may not have my meat. <music> Greetings, and welcome back to Here's What I Heard. I'm Laura Degatis, your hostess. Thank you for clicking on my little acre of the internet today. As I was saying, no, you may not have my hamburgers, or my tacos, or my ribs, or my chicken, or my venison, or my pork. Just because you or some other self-proclaimed expert has deemed it. Insert degrading buzzword here. The sign of a good work is that something that you can read or watch many times and always take something new from it each time. That's why things like that become classics. This week I'm delving into an argument presented by what looks like at first glance a pretty tenured professor at Oxford University that just grated on my nerves. Maybe because of the very first statement that this expert on veganism made before she even made any kind of argument about it. I was also choking on all of the woke buzzwords by the end of the presentation also. I'm going to show you this video and critique it along the way as we're going. Uh, it's a pretty much a 12 minute beratement of those who would absolutely dare to hunt or eat meat like animals have been doing pretty much since the beginning of time. But real quick, before we go into all of that, please make sure to join me on Thursday evenings at 7 p.m. Central Time, 8 p.m. Eastern Time, 5 o'clock Avocado Time for my Talk To Me America live call-in talk show, uh, where the world wants to know what you have to say. So call me and tell them like it is. Also, please give this video a like, a share, a comment, subscribe to my channel, hit the notification bell or the fire button if you're on Odyssey, and a donation would be the ultimate. So please, all my links are below. Click on some of them, will ya? This is going to be a rather long one. So you might want to get a snack or a drink or just listen to me in the background. Uh, there is also a scroll bar at the bottom of the video if you want to skip anything. But here goes. Her name is Carol Adams, and in this video, we will be watching as she presents the last argument in a debate called Beyond Meat. I think they're going to vote on whether Oxford should go vegan or beyond meat, as they like to pontificate. I found out from her blog that she is a feminist vegan advocate, activist, and independent scholar and author. Geez, the long and drawn out titles these folks give themselves these days. And then they get pissed off when you can't remember all of it. Anyway, she wrote a book in which she seems to be well known in the scholar circles anyway, called The Sexual Politics of Meat. Really? I gotta be honest. It isn't something that I would ever read. I mean, sexual politics and meat just don't seem to be a good combination of words. Uh, what exactly is sexual politics? And I'm sure she defines it as whatever it is she defines it at. After all, she's the expert. And uh, actually, why does meat have anything to do with sexual politics? I'm sure she explains that too. She does give a few examples in this lecture that she gives. And um, that's pretty much all she gives is references from her own texts and her own books. So uh, there's that to think about when we're listening to this particular uh, lecture as well. So, but I, I also guess if, uh, if you imagine and think about shit like this hard enough, you could find fault with anything and everything that you have decided is not okay. So she also has a master's in divinity. And of course, when I read that, I was like, a master's in gods? And so I looked it up, of course, 
and it is a definitely a degree in how to be a preacher or a pastor or a leader of a Christian religious organization. So yeah, a Masters of God, actually, or Christian theology, to be more simple. I'm pretty sure what we are about to witness, you too will be convinced that uh, even a degree in Christianity can be perverted into manipulate any religion, even veganism, as we're going to see here. I know I was after doing the research on this, and actually there's not a whole lot about her out there other than her books and her own blog, which is out there basically to tell everybody how great she is and her books, sell her books. So we start. I've read the motion and I believe we should move beyond all meat. So what we choose to eat has consequences far beyond the circumference of our plates. Specifically, your vote tonight expresses your allegiance to or rejection of a white supremacist patriarchal worldview. Okay. <laughs> that pretty much tells you exactly where she's going with this. And this statement is actually something that absolutely tainted the entire speech for me. Why? Because she just essentially started the entire premise of her argument with, if you don't agree with what I'm about to tell you and make the right vote on this topic, then you are a white supreme pizza and you and hold and condone white supremacy as well. So essentially she just called the entire room racists. If you vote against this proposition, you're a racist and you're a white supremacist. I have, uh, Two questions. Again, really? Now you're an expert on this woke shit too? Which... <laughs> and by the way, have you looked in the mirror lately? Let's go on if you can handle being lectured to about your whiteness, misogyny, and colonialism. Do we vote to further inequality and sustain world-destroying violence? In the sexual politics of meat, I introduced the concept of animals as absent reference. In order to be eaten, animals must disappear as living beings, that is, be killed. They then disappear conceptually, as so many forms in which we eat animals' corpses are massaged by euphemistic language. Hamburger, steak, pork, bacon, etc. What would you have people call them? <laughs> and what I was going to say, so animal deaths are psychological now, uh, and of course, these meat products are named for the animals that they come from. I mean, you know exactly what it comes from when you hear the name of the cut. Hey there, can I have one of them there mashed up cow frisbees that come on a bun with taters and maters? Even the speaker just before me talked about turkeys. He's talking about dead butchered turkeys of whom part of their bodies will be eaten. Yeah, you can't eat the bones or the beak. <laughs> but yeah, turkeys, she's, she's downgrading her predecessor, the person who spoke before her already. She's a uh, man. Meat eaters order leg of lamb, not a baby lamb's leg. That's because lamb is already the baby sheep. You don't call it a baby, baby sheep. The animals cannot possess their own body parts. Not after you kill them, they can't. Tonight, think about how the language of our debate has or has not participated in the structure of the absent referent. Who disappears and why? 21st century animal eating requires our complicity in a new colonialism. Really now? <laughs> Yeah, colonialism was such a bad thing and doesn't actually exist anymore unless you consider their open borders down in the south right now. So they got to make it up as they go along. Like it says, now we're stealing the animal's land. We know how settler colonialism worked and a race and replace system that forced indigenous people off the land, replacing them with cattle and white settlers. I recognize today as Indigenous People's Day. 
Whoop-dee-doo. One of the defining aspects of the colonial legacy is an ongoing white supremacist belief system and an ownership paradigm. So I guess she owns absolutely nothing then? And again with the white supremacy. When you own the land, you get the title to it. Entitlement and ownership are linked. Yeah, duh! You're damn right they are. If you buy the land and you work the land and you own the land, then you're entitled to the land and what comes from it. That's actually constitutional. And I remember a whole lot of eminent domain going on courtesy of our government entities. Not colonialist, as she put it. And it does the exact same thing as what she just described. All the justifications for the taking of land by white colonial authorities included the claim well, the Indians can't prove they own the land. Hunting exists within this colonial ownership paradigm. It presumes that animals don't have title to their own lives. Once to Who does then? Is possessed of their lives, the hunted animal can become your property. Uh, in a minute. A prop yeah, somebody was going to try and interrupt her and she wouldn't let them. In fact, in a minute became never. Approximately 90% of Native Americans were killed off by erase and replace settler colonialism. That's not true. It's the new colonialism that boasts, I'll hunt for myself and be grateful like the Native Americans. Oh, so she thinks that this new colonialism is from the 16 and 1700s? Ugh. As well, like the Native Americans, I thank the animal for their sacrifice. And I wonder, how do you know the animal would have picked you to feed off their corpse? Animals don't think this way. They don't go around asking other animals or people to eat them. Which I know she would probably argue that this is her point, but it would never work that way. Uh, is she saying that we have the right to choose the predator that eats us now? Also, she seems to hint that it was okay for the indigenous peoples to eat meat because it was different for them. But because the colonialists did what they had done uh, all the way up until the United States was formed to acquire the land, they from then on were never allowed to touch another bite of any kind of meat and their dependents would be cursed for eternity, what were normal occurrences at the time? Give me a break here. Just because some indigenous people thanked their meals before devouring it doesn't make their meat eating any different than anyone else's. And I do think that folks were eating meat and whatever they could actually get their hands on that didn't eat them first as we developed as a civilization that actually started stopping to squat before defecating and can now reason well enough to make money and spend it by buying land? She makes it sound like no one ever, 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 ever ate meat before they were eliminated and then replaced. Uh, quite ridiculous premise if you ask me. They were all hunters. Why do you think a lot of them starved to death when they were relegated to the reservations that had no wildlife or no vegetation? In fact, if you're so worried about indigenous peoples, why are you still allowing them to be relegated to their government-appointed reservations where they're still essentially starving or destitute? Answer me that. The argument that hunting is ethical presumes that some primeval form of eating exists. <laughs> unmediated by corrupting influences of society. There's no room in the new colonialism for an indigenous worldview to exist. Instead, it collapses more than a hundred Native American nations into one amalgam and attributes a static indigenous worldview that erases those nations that were predominantly vegetarian and lived in urban areas. The new colonialists see nothing wrong with a pick and choose approach to indigenous thought that never engages with the survival issues indigenous peoples are facing today. Yeah, like I said, you are going way back, but what about today? 70% of the population would have to be eliminated for people to try to rely on hunting to survive. And where does she get that statistic from? Who would live and who dies and who decides? Survival of the fittest, baby. It's always worked that way. 
As for domesticated animals, Percy Shelley pointed out just after being expelled from Oxford, the quantity of nutritious vegetable matter consumed in fattening the carcass of an ox would afford 10 times the sustenance if gathered immediately from the bosom of the earth. Yeah, did he test that one out too? 200 years after Shelley, and we, as we've heard, one third of the land mass of the world is committed to animal agriculture. Entire ecosystems are disappearing. 80% of deforested acres in the Amazon were cleared for animal-based cattle grazing. And yet tonight at dinner, I saw the lion's eaters send meat back from their plates. So-called free... What is she talking about? Now she goes around and watches everybody else eat? Gross. Free-range animals contribute more greenhouse gases, while killing them in mobile slaughterhouses requires more water than industrial slaughterhouses and leaves behind an immense amount of waste requiring an intense amount of chemicals in the process. Your meat may be organic, but your slaughtering isn't. If you eat animals, you take up more climate space, requiring more water, more land, more forest deforestation, contributing more greenhouse gases. This is bullshit. If you plant a garden or if you have anything, nothing but vegetation to grow, you literally have to kill everything else. That includes every insect, every mole, every other plant around it, and especially weeds or any kind of trees or anything like that. You continue to kill any bugs that might try to come and eat those plants or worms or any of that stuff. So you literally, before you start, you have to kill everything, the moles, the voles, the mice, anything in the, anything that could eat your plants, and then you just continue killing everything in the process that eats those things so that we can have them. Industrialized, regular farming isn't any better than what she's claiming this is, and I still want to know where she got her numbers from. I notice, notice once again, she only refers to and references her own book. I'm sure that can be verified on her own book, but where are those references from? And uh, all these folks that would be eliminated otherwise would be able to sustain themselves on plant life alone. Thankfully, we don't have to depend on just hunting alone. That's the whole point. But it seems like you want to take all of that away except for but one form of survival. How's that going to work? That's the reason why we developed all of this, so that we could feed everybody. And we're still not doing it, even though we can. This is felt disproportionately by countries in the global south. Their carbon footprint is smaller, but they experience more frequent and intense climate change caused weather events. Once again, proof? Where's this coming from? According to the actual science on this, none of these things are changed from over the last at least hundred years. And we're not going to be here that long. These events especially affect girls and young women. Oh, really? Your hamburger comes with a dose of misogyny. Oh, is that because of the fact that we have male cowboys, male ranchers, uh, you know, all, all, the, all the men that actually do all of this work to feed us? Is that, is that it? Do we need to go out there now and, and, tell, and show them how it's done as a woman? In fact, if I'm not mistaken, I don't see very many women plowing and tilling up uh, land either. And didn't. So what is she talking about? Another buzzword, misogyny. Now, first you're racist, now you're misogynist, even if you're female. The Western world colonized their space without sending a single bee feeder. Through colonial power, the diet of beef-loving English people became normative. The food heritage of pre-conquest peoples, like the land itself, was overrun. It was the colonizers, especially the British, who declared that the virility of meat-eating nations explained their success over the supposed feminine and weak rice-eating countries they, they defeated. So? Propaganda, there's propaganda in all wars. Big deal. So they said they, eat, they ate meat and that was the reason why they won. Wow. 
Historically, the vast majority of the world lived without animal protein as a central part of their diet. I don't think you know that. The assumption that the best protein comes from corpses is a racist belief. Oh, here we go with the racist belief now. A racist belief. E eating meat is a racist belief. Forget about the fact that it nourishes people and... Uh, Actually, the indigenous people and people that actually did start by surviving by hunting used every single part of the body of that per of that animal that they killed. Uh, in fact, uh, the bones were used for things. Uh, the hides were used for clothing. I mean, hello, lady. As it erases and replaces indigenous African, Asian, Mesoamerican cultural food practices. Nah. They just conquered each other and took each other's land. I don't think the only only food they worried about was the food that fed their armies. Uh, I'm not real sure if they worried too much about what was what was nutritious. They just had to keep going. Meat eating is also one of the ways gender-based structures of oppression are perpetuated. That's bullshit. Men in the West are taunted to renew their man card by eating meat because that's what real men do. By who? Who? Who's taunting men to eat meat? I've never heard anybody taunt anybody else to eat meat. In fact, the people that I am hearing everyone else taunt to eat vegetables are people like you. I don't see meat eaters, meat eaters going around forcing anybody to eat meat and telling people that they're wrong if they don't. That's the sexual politics of meat, and it reveals how oh, I get it. it really is. I get it. So if you're a man and you eat meat, then it's the sexual politics. Yeah, okay. <sighs> yeah, I'm not going to read her book either. Back home, my library card is good for seven years. But a man card can expire between breakfast and lunch if someone eats a veggie burger? No. Masculinity, a construct of the gender binary facing constant disabilization. Now here we go again. The gender binary. And it is facing destabilization. I mean, take a look at some of the people walking around. Uh, the male feminists and these, 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 these people that just look like they're out in outer space and everything like that. Do you think that they'd ever be able to protect anybody or do anything for the for their fellow man? I don't. Feels always under threat. And because it is. You've is been sitting here bashing it. men for the You've been sitting here bashing men for this whole uh uh, uh this whole lecture. But oh, we feel it's wrong for us to feel bashed. Just stand back and take it. Question? That's why after 9-11... <laughs> nope. That's why after 9-11, a focus on men as heroes and on meat eating became part of the reclamation of a wounded masculinity. Are you serious? When did they stick meat eating in that? I want to see some of her studies. I want to see what the fuck she's looking at. I've n again, I've never seen anything having anything at all to do with meat eating to do with our heroes of 9-11. Shame on you, lady. When a black man was elected as U.S. president, we saw how white this wounded masculinity was. Oh, white really? White supremacists weapon weaponized it, eating meat, eggs, and dairy. Images of milk drinking white men, of platters groaning with meat. I want to see what she's talking about. She needs to show us this shit. She should have had a better presentation. Basically, she's standing here telling us that we're bad, and that we, and no matter what it is that we do, we're bad unless we believe and do exactly as she says. She's so much better than everybody else. And the baiting of liberal men as so-called soy boys are all part of the neo-Nazi messaging. Oh, here's another buzzword. Neo-Nazi messaging because we call these guys that walk around limp-wristed soy boys. So, <laughs> so we go from, from people eating soy to people not eating meat or because of the meat thing. Really? The gym the, the mental gymnastics that has gone into this. It that's that's why I told you this particular 
uh, lecture grated on my nerves because not only did she stand there and call everybody racist this, misogynist that, even the women. She basically is making an argument based on calling everybody names based on her dislike of meat eating. This is their right, the neo-Nazis say. This is their identity. The new colonization rests on the unstable foundation of white men's insecurities. Look at the way people, uh, men. How in effect do you expect people to not have insecurities when all you do is tell them how fucking bad they are all the time? How do you not expect someone to not have insecurities? In fact, I have personal experience with the insecurities because of being talked down to all the time. So, you talk, again, she's basically saying, bad white man, bad white man, bad white man, and if you feel insecure about it, you, you don't have the right to feel insecure about it. We're coming if we're coming for you, but don't feel insecure. Just let us let us roll all over you. Let us tell you how to live. Let us tell you what to eat. I don't think so. In the animal industry, speak of female animals as willing and ready to be made forcibly pre pregnant. Which female animals are powerless to resist? There'd be no meat eating without the constant forced reproduction by female animals. Hold up a second. Don't animals reproduce naturally? So they're putting them together. They're not forcing them to do this stuff. In fact, a lot of times females are artificially inseminated. That's not forced either. If this is what they do, and of course if they're trying to create babies so that people can continue the flocks or the, <laughs> you know, we're going to eat them all and just not reproduce any of them? And again, reproduction is a natural occurrence as well. Yet popular culture is flooded with references to sexy cows, sexy pigs, sexy chickens, sexy fishes, who all just... Are you serious, lady? Yeah, I've seen commercials. The pig sticking his, there, his ass up in the air and saying, Eat me, please! Give me a break. Oh my God. Are people actually paying to go to college here? Want to have fun. They want to be pregnant and they want to be killed because this feminized sexuality wants to be eaten. Yeah, here we go again. Patriarchy, patriarchy, patriarchy. <sighs> women eat too. And you know what? I know, I know some women that if you took their steak away from them, they'll stab your ass. The only desire animals are credited with possessing is the desire to be consumed, which strangely can only be expressed after their death. Real what do you mean by that? <laughs> what do you mean by that? They can't express it until after they're dead? That's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard in my life. Animals don't think that way. Like I said before, most animals, especially the non-domesticated animals, think food, sex, get away. That's it. And maybe sleep. Life tells a different story. Animals try to escape from slaughterhouses or farms. Wouldn't you? Able cows try to reclaim their calves taken from them so their nursing material can be monetized and sold to humans. They fight and resist. Okay, so now what? We're going to starve the babies now too? You're going to take the milk? You want to take everything away that has anything to do with animals whatsoever? The fate the colonial empire claims is their welcomed destiny. Some meat eaters are afraid of what they will feel if they look too closely at the degradations that constitute animals' experience. No, most people just don't care. They're hungry. They want to eat. They, they get the food that's available. What do you want to do? What are you going to do? Mention disabling practices or the devastating separation of cows and their babies, and we hear meat eaters exclaim, don't tell me. I've never heard that. Again, I've never heard that. Most people, again, don't care. As long as their stomachs are full. Most people, 
especially now they've made it so convenient for everybody that we don't have to do the barter system or that we don't have to grow our own vegetables or we don't have to grow our own cows or our own meat or our own milk or any of that other stuff. Nobody gives a shit where that stuff comes from. They barely care what they put in it. There's so many chemicals and everything like that in the cows because of the government regulations. See, she makes this sound like it's everybody's fault, but what are we supposed to do? We complain to the government and then they make these rules and then all of a sudden we're the bad guys for wanting safe meat or safe this or enough meat or enough things to, 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 to uh, feed us? <sighs> Why are they afraid of the feelings such knowledge produces? They accept a patriarchal construct that views feelings as unruly and untrustworthy. They are. Ever made a decision when you're angry and then come back and it's the wrong decision? You need to be stoic about some things and we gotta eat. You gotta do what you gotta do when you gotta do it sometimes. Causing chaos. To say you care about animals is considered a sign of weakness in a world still committed to the gender Never. binary. Never. Bullshit. They value stereotyped masculine reason over stereotyped feminine feeling. <laughs> yeah. Because how many feminists have gotten their feelings tangled up in all of this shit and end up getting their head chopped off? And wants order. And yet the reasons we hear are so irrational. If I did not eat animals, they never would be born. Meat eaters like anti-abortionists have forgotten that one quality of non-existence. Oh, here we go with the abort. Now she's blaming pro-life people. Human lives, put it this way, she's a theologist. One of the things that she should know is that God put us in charge of the animals to do with what we pleased. Some animals get revered, others get eaten. That's just the way it goes. Not to mention the fact that what about all the animal sacrifices in the Old Testament? Was that wrong too? Were we supposed to not listen to our God? She's a theist. Or... Something like that, anyway. That's what her degree is in, remember? Existence is not having awareness about existence. Meat eaters say, why, if we put prisoners to work in slaughterhouses in England, they will be learning a skill. Yep. I did not know that killing was a skill generalizable to other jobs. It is. You know how to time manage your butchering skills. You also know how to butcher meat. You probably could probably work in a grocery store or even open your own butcher shop at that point. You're actually going to be killing a lot of potential jobs and a lot of potential uh, lives here if you do this. The new colonialist boasts, I only eat meat from locally owned farms and I know the farmers there love their animals. If killing what one loves is standard practice, I hope they don't start loving me. Don't worry about that, chica. What about carrots? What about carrots, were asked, though I've never seen a meat eater leap into the road to save a carrot from being run over by an automobile. When all else fails, meat eaters assert that animals are not our equals. One would think such an... They're not. Have you seen one pick up a pencil and start writing yet? Have you seen one use any sort of reason whatsoever with regards to the decisions that they make? when they're hunting or, or whatever it is they're doing in their life. Even our domesticated animals don't think that way. And they've been living with us for years now. If you see a vegetarian animal, you know who's making the choice. It ain't the animal. Quality would require us to respond more, not less sympathetically. Meat eaters tell me it's so hard to change and yet I watch them work even harder not to change. So, you're being a judgmental bitch again, are you? <laughs> yeah, it is hard to change. And actually, if, if, the, if you enjoy meat, you're going to eat meat. Nobody, again, nobody really gives a shit. Who eats what? But when you start telling people what they need to be eating and why they're so bad for not eating this and that and the other, you're going to get resistance. And you're damn right you're going to get trolls. Listen to what you're saying to people. 
If you all agree that 95% of meat is from factory farmed animals and it's wrong, stop eating it. Go to your colleges and eat the vegan option, which every college at this campus offers. Great, fantastic. Equality, that's equality. If they only start serving vegetarian meals, then again, that's wrong. That's wrong. And I don't know about this 90% of meat coming from all these factories. And of course, who's working these factories? Who owns these factories? Does she, does she ever mention any of that? Again, you're going to take a whole bunch of jobs away from people. Then what? They're going to starve and then you're going to make everybody else starve that can't have the meat that's not being produced now. Or the, it's going to be so expensive that only people like you... You look pretty rich to me in that sparkly gown and uh, sharks, uh, shark skin uh, jacket. Uh, yeah, like I say, she doesn't own anything. It's very simple. If you agree with the basic thing so that we're not even debating factory farms, then act on it. Yep, no debate. They're just bad, period. So, is our global outcome to be determined by people afraid to change? We're going to hold on to some old conceived notion of power? <laughs> Eating meat is an old conceived notion of power now. Man, man, oh man. <laughs> and they're not afraid to change, but they're not going to listen to somebody like you. That's what I say, you have the freedom to eat whatever the fuck you want. You don't have the freedom or the or the power or any of that other stuff to tell anybody else what they need to be eating or not eating. Change may be hard, but not changing is harder. Not true. Tonight you're being asked to vote on whether you accept this new colonialism or not. Which is bullshit. New colonialism, which means, again, we're taking over the animal's land and, and that kind of thing. That's essentially what she's saying. Our menu choices don't stay on the plate. And I heard all your laughter. I know some of these must be new ideas. Nope, they're not new ideas. In fact, <laughs> veganism has been around since the 14th century. Or you think they're fringe or whatever. Yes, they are fringe and whatever. Our whiteness is part of the problem. Bullshit. Tired of hearing that. That is crap. Of meat eating. She literally is literally saying that only white people eat meat and cause the problem of eating meat. Have you been to any restaurants in the United States lately? I see every nationality, every race eating at these restaurants. And I eat at steak places and I eat at seafood places. Oh, and then she didn't mention anything about seafood. It's all pigs, cows, chickens, turkeys, and all of this. So, yeah, she only cares about farm animals. She only cares about land animals. These people are ridiculous. It really is. So, your vote tonight is important, but even more important is the question of what or who will be on your plate in the morning. No who. <laughs> if you Put it this way, if you're a cannibal, then you can say who. Then you can ask who. Animals don't give each other names. This isn't a Disney movie. Sweet dreams. Yeah, what a witch. What a witch. She's decided... She's decided that meat is wrong, and she's been writing about it and, and, and pontificating about it since the 1970s. And she got up there and essentially told everybody in this room that if you don't go along with this Beyond Meat uh, vote, if you don't agree with all the factory... Uh, uh, farming and all this other stuff and everything like that. You are a white supremacist, uh, misogynistic, racist, colonialist. Which again, colonialism stopped after the United States was founded, I guess you could say. So, uh, this new colonialism, essentially what she's trying to portray is that we are now taking over and replacing the population of the animals, which are the same as us. 
the exact same as us. That they have the exact same intelligence. They have the exact same feelings. They have the exact same um, everything as us. Once again, I'm sorry, lady. This particular speech sounded to me like you were trying very hard to pander to every SJW on the planet. Being a vegan does not make you a good or a bad person. It only makes what you choose to put in your mouth and eat and choose for your sustenance. Which again, you have the choice to do that. You have a choice to be vegan. Alright? That may please you. The thing is, you eliminate everyone else's choice by trying to enforce this kind of crap and then shaming everybody for it. Who put these procedures in, in, in force in the first place? Okay, and to talk about the fact that only men do this and they're doing it and not changing because you say so, because they're so threatened by you and so threatened by the, the feelings that they may have, that's crap. That's a straw man, that's a straw man argument. You don't know what these people feel. Not to mention the fact that you go up to them and start lecturing. Of course they're not going to hear what you have to say. Especially when you start off with, if you don't agree with me, you are a racist. You know what, lady? You can take that speech that you folded over and roll it real tightly and shove it right up your ass. I don't care what you call me or what buzzwords you use. Actually, before we go, I'd like to highlight this kid. I'm going to show you a few quick clips of him. He was behind my my speech box um, during the video. But <laughs> this was another thing that actually confirmed to me that everything, almost everything that this woman said was absolute bullshit. So enjoy the kid in the green glasses. Specifically, your vote tonight expresses your allegiance to or rejection of a white supremacist patriarchal worldview. Do we vote to further inequality to be eaten? Animals must disappear as living beings, that is, be killed. They then disappear conceptually, as so many forms in which we eat animals' corpses are massaged by euphemistic language, hamburger, steak, pork, bacon, etc. Even the speaker just before me, Colonial Legacy, is an ongoing white supremacist belief system and an ownership as well. Like the Native Americans, I thank the animal for their sacrifice. And I wonder, how do you know the animal would have picked you to feed off their corpse? The argument that hunting is ethical and itself was overrun. It was the colonizers, especially the British, who declared that the virility of meat-eating nations explained their success over the supposed feminine and weak that reveals how unsettled masculinity really is. Back home, my library card is good for seven years, but a man card can expire between breakfast and lunch if someone eats a veggie burger. Masculinity, a construct of the gender binary facing constant destabilization. I do hope you enjoyed my video today. I realize it was a little bit long and it was kind of a rant, but again, I am sick to death of hearing white supremacy, misogyny, and uh, racism about every little fucking thing on the planet. Eating meat is not racist. Eating meat is not misogynist. Eating meat is nutritious. And it's also a choice. Don't allow these fringe people, and yes, she is a fringe person, to tell you otherwise. And believe me, her opinion should mean absolutely nothing to you. Because she probably wouldn't spit on you if you were on fire. Especially if she saw that you were sending meat back. Good God, that was creepy. Anyways. Thank you once again for clicking on my little acre of the internet today. Don't forget to subscribe, like, comment, and share. Also, join me on Thursdays at 7 p.m. Central, 8 p.m. Eastern, and 5 o'clock avocado time for the Talk To Me America call-in talk show, where the world wants to know what you have to say. So call me and tell them like it is. Thank you for clicking on my little acre of the internet today. Until next time!